A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, I have appointed you a watchman for the house of Israel. When you hear a word from my mouth, you shall warn them for me. If I say to the wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not warn him or speak out to dissuade him from his wicked conduct so that he might live, the wicked man shall die for his sins, but I will hold you responsible for his death. If, on the other hand, you have warned the wicked man, yet he has not turned away from his evil, nor from his wicked conduct, then he shall die for his sins, but you shall save your life. If a virtuous man turns away from virtue and does wrong, when I place a stumbling block before him, he shall die. He shall die for his sins, and his virtuous deeds shall not be remembered. But I will hold you responsible for his death if you did not warn him. When, on the other hand, you have warned a virtuous man not to sin, and he has in fact not sinned, he shall surely live because of your warning, and you shall save your own life. The word of the Lord. The Lord will build a house for us and guard our city. The Lord will build a house for us and guard our city. Unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guard the city, in vain does the guard keep vigil. The Lord will build a house for us and guard our city. It is vain for you to rise early or put off your rest. You that eat hard-earned bread, for he gives to his beloved in sleep. The Lord will build a house for us and guard our city. A reading from the letter of James. Beloved, where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war from within your members? You covet, but you do not possess. You kill and envy, but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Adulterers, do you not know that to be a lover of the world means enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wants to be a lover of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose that the scripture speaks without meaning when it says, the spirit that he has made to dwell in us tends towards jealousy, but he bestows a greater grace. Therefore it says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you of two minds. Begin to lament, to mourn, to weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy into dejection. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so also I love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and have remained in his love. I have told you this, that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, and blessed Independence Day to everyone as we set aside this time as a nation to uh, focus on our, our founding and our origins. And, um, and it's a time for us that becomes increasingly difficult as a nation as it gets further and further from our foundings. And when you think about it, uh, th there is uh, nothing like the origins of the United States, where you had well-developed, mature society that went and found a hunk of dirt where there was no well-developed society, and 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 from from scratch crafted. A, a constitution and a people and a way of life and and it really is is wholly unique in in light of human history to have that opportunity and we've pretty much now been to every corner of the globe and and there's nowhere else to to go and uh, start such an experiment again and but as we look at where our country is today from its founding some hundreds of years ago we find ourselves in a very different place, very different motivations in much of our nation as we uh, seem to navigate these times with, uh, with great difficulty. And I'm mindful as we uh, reflect on this day, and as I said in the, in the opening greeting, that today is Independence Day, and uh, my prayer is that it's not independence from the Lord, but that we as a people are staying near to the Lord. And the readings that were put before us today uh, don't, in just, don't just invite us into this relationship with the Lord, but there's some challenging readings that really invite us to be that leaven in the world around us. Ezekiel uh, has, uh, receives a challenging word from God as he is a, a prophet to Israel, calling them back. And he says, to, if you warn the wicked man and he turns from his ways, he'll be saved. But if you do not warn him or speak out to dissuade him from his wicked conduct so that he may live, the wicked man shall die for his sins, but I will hold you responsible for his death. Wow. Now, by extension, all of us who are in Christ have received the gospel, have received the truth, and God invites us to not only apply it to our lives, but to be the people that will say to the other, this is the way of the Lord. Walk in it. Here is life. Here is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, always with charity, we want to be building bridges. We don't want to just be smacking people with the truth. But what I find more often than not, aside from being offensive with the truth, most people just kind of ignore what goes on instead of finding ways to build bridges and invite people into a response of faith. The prophet Ezekiel invites us today 
to engage with the people around us. We're reminded as we pray for our nation in our psalm today, unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. And I love this. It says, unless the Lord guard the city, in vain does it keep guard. It is vain to rise early or to put off your rest. You eat that hard-earned bread, for he gives you his beloved in sleep. And he's saying, you can get up early and work. You can work hard to protect your nation. But if the Lord is not at the center of what we do, we amass armies and defenses and economies in vain. So by extension, this comes down to us. Unless the Lord is building our homes, unless the Lord is shoring up our marriages, unless we are building our lives on the Lord, we, we build, we labor in vain. And he's saying, you can get up and go to work and do all the things. You will not have peace unless the Lord is building the house, unless the Lord is laying the foundation, that foundation of Jesus Christ built on by the apostles and comes down to us to this day. And you might find and have found yourselves at different parts of life where you feel like I'm working harder and getting less ahead. Unless the Lord builds the house, we labor in vain. James gives us the challenging invitation to ask with right hearts. He says, you ask and don't receive because we ask wrongly to spend it on our passions. And, but in the end, he gives us the way. He says, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Well, our culture is pretty much not resisting the devil at all. They're just running headlong into all that uh, licentiousness and debauchery can provide. Submit yourselves to the Lord. Resist the devil and he will flee. This is very proactive. It's, uh, it means you and I in our moral life, in our personal life, that we are to proactively push back against the darkness. Speaking with a young man earlier today as he was talking about the challenge of drugs in our culture, and he said, Father Drake, this is a spiritual condition. While there are addictive patterns and things that take place, this is Satan at work in the lives of the young, of the young adults, of the middle age, of the elderly to take their lives. So we come to the gospel. And in the gospel, Jesus gives us the simple way. It's not hard to understand, but it's challenging to live. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love. My command is this, love one another as I have loved you. It's not rocket science. This is what changes the world. Right now, our nation still in a fair bit of turmoil with riots and dissension and trying to find itself and its mooring in light of uh, some racial tensions. It's not more complicated than sacrificially loving others. But that's the problem. It's sacrificial. It costs us something. As I reflect on today in our nation, as I pray for our nation, I'm mindful of a phrase that is often quoted by John Adams, that our nation and our system of government was made for moral and religious people and is wholly unfit for any other. So I, I spent some time looking that up and I've heard the quote often and I thought, where, where does that come from? And I better double check that and make sure it's not one of those things. Well, he didn't really say it. Oh, well, he actually did say it, number one. <clears throat> and what's interesting is who he said it to. He says it to the Massachusetts militia. He says it to the people who were being guarded or given the charge of, of to some extent, keeping the peace. And here's what he says. I want to read his <clears throat> statement here. And there's a lot more to it, but this is the nucleus. He said, should the American people 
become capable of deep simulation towards one another, meaning not being honest, being duplicitous. And de being duplicitous <clears throat> towards foreign nations, which assumes the language of justice and moderation while practicing iniquity and extravagance. So saying you, you have the language of justice and moderation, but what you practice is sin, extravagance. He goes on to say, and if these people display the most, in the most captivating manner, the charming pictures of candor, frankness, and sincerity, while it is at the same time rioting in rapine and insolence, the country will be the most miserable habitation in the world because we have no government armed with power capable of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. Avarice, ambition, revenge would break the strongest cords of our Constitution as a whale goes through a net. Our Constitution was made for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. So he's very aware as he talks to the militia, enough guns won't fix it, enough jails won't fix it. The only thing that changes us, the only thing that made our nation different at that time is that we are regulated by the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as we reflect on this Independence Day, um, may we take time to reflect on the founding and those that gave their lives to, to be free from oppression. Let us pray for those that continue to seek to be free from oppression. And above all, let us not seek to be independent from the Lord, but to pursue him, not only for ourselves, but for those who are around us. And heed the words of the prophet Ezekiel that charge us to proclaim the truth to those around us and help them get to heaven. Amen? Amen.